I'd like you to imagine your dream life. See the version of you who has what you want to have, feels how you want to feel, and is who you want to be. I'm Brittany Hoops, your hypnotherapist and manifestation coach, and this is the show where I'll teach you to master the full power of your mind, to guide you on your journey towards Destination Manifestation. Uh, yeah, take a step back. All right, this is Destination Manifestation, a podcast about using the power of your mind to manifest your dream life. We have stories, lessons, exercises, guided visualizations, and conversations designed to help you align with your goals. Hosted by me, Brittany Hoops. How are you guys doing? Welcome, welcome. I must say, if you're already subscribed to the show, thank you so much. I feel like you guys have been reaching out to me more on Instagram recently and telling me about how you enjoy the show. And I want you to just, I really hope that you view this show as having your little manifesty vesty in your pocket or in your earbuds or wherever it might be. And I'm just hanging out with you, just helping you reach your goals, become who you want to be. And so I'm so thankful for those of you who are subscribed and will continue to be. Today, guys, I am so excited. If you know me, or I'll even say this, if you first discovered me through Big Brother 24 a few summers ago, whenever that might have been, you might be a little surprised, if not downright shocked at who I have here on the show today. Okay? Well, there's a few people I think you'd be more surprised about, but it's someone who I'm actually very proud to call a real life friend, and that is Turner from Big Brother 24. That's right. We have Matt Turner. You might know him as one of my fellow Leftovers Alliance members. You might know him as the person who put me on the block every single time he was HOH. <laughs> you might know him or have discovered him online through one of his amazing furniture making or rug tufting videos as he is the creator of plant-based furniture. So regardless of how you know him or if you know him, if you're a creative or if you're a business owner wondering what is the kind of mindset that it takes to be a real successful professional doing what you love in a creative field, you are going to freaking love this conversation with Turner. And I just want you to kind of and this is what I did <laughs> as I re-listened to the conversation. And even as I was conducting it or we were having it, um, I wasn't conducting it. We, we were having a conversation is I kind of almost like watched it from like a third party perspective because it's just beautiful to see how his mind works, because I don't know if he realizes it. I don't think he does. Turner, if you hear me now. But he thinks differently than a lot of people, um, at least a lot of people that I work with, clients. And it's in such a beautiful way. Like he has this deep seated belief, belief in himself, belief in his dreams that is just so beautiful to witness. And there's a lot that we can all learn from just seeing that in action. And so I want you to like that would be kind of my recommendation on how to digest this episode is just see the way and how he thinks about things that comes pretty naturally to him that that we could all learn from um, as we apply it to our own manifestations, okay? You're going to freaking love what Turner has to share today. Seriously, I'm not exaggerating here. I think Turner might be one of the most interesting people that I personally know. Like we used to joke back in the Big Brother house that you could literally talk about any subject. I mean, you could be talking about anything. You could freaking be talking about goats, okay? And Turner would just like out of nowhere, just kind of be like, he would like wake out, a, wake up out of a stupor and he'd just be like, Oh, yeah, that reminds me of that time that I got caught in a monsoon on the top of a mountain and a pack of goats chased me for 14 miles through the mud. Like, I don't know. I'm making this up. Or maybe it is a story. I don't know. But it's just like you look at him and you'd be like, what? <laughs> like, seriously, this guy has lived more in his life in 24 years than most people do in an entire lifetime. OK, but you'll love this episode if you want a sneak peek, like I said before, into the mindset of what it takes to be a professional creative. Plus, I would say that we, we dive into some never before shared stories about our big brother days, which you might find interesting if you're a fan of the show. Oh, Turner. Yeah. Brittany. <laughs> <laughs> 
imagine us, I'm not going to say two years ago, because we didn't know each other two years ago, yeah. but let's say a year and a half ago, would we ever think this would be happening right now? Yeah, if somehow secretly Sid came down from the raft and was like, hey, just so you know, a year and a half, you guys are going to be besties, you're going to be up in Britney on TikTok Live all the time, I'd be like, you must be nuts, because there's no chance, but like, I'm literally so excited to be here talking to you, and we've had so many good conversations, even since, I feel like we really hit our breaking point as close friends august uh when the big brother premiere happened we talked for hours um and then megan and Stephen were like all right are they gonna wrap this up anytime <laughs> yeah, soon but, no, Stephen's like you literally dragged me here and all you're doing is talking to turner yeah. here yeah. and so i mean ever since then i feel like we've made great strides and like i respect you so much and i consider you such a good friend so i'm really happy to be Turner, here i feel exactly the same way and that makes me so freaking happy because i don't know i remember you know not to like rehash old things but i remember that was one thing that i was kind of bummed about it was getting outside the house like i knew we did we were did not see eye to eye a lot game wise yeah. but you know and you and i have talked about it we don't need to go into it but like you know i was kind of bummed like i was like oh man i could really see being good friends with turner outside this environment and then I was nervous about that. But then wouldn't you know, it is like, that's what it ended up being. And so, of course, I, I like it, it. It, if I could call Jasmine a close friend of mine, then quite literally anything is possible. Um, and like I was just telling you, I, I there's like there's so many moments where in the moment I was like, just I was honestly just so annoying and like nihilistic about stuff like when we were making shirts together I was like I would rather do anything than make these shirts with Britney but now I look up like I look back at that and I'm like I'm so glad we spent that like quality time together even if in the moment I was just like raging about nothing you know well, you know what's so funny is I think that is such a beautiful example of us all of us all living our own realities right yeah and the big brother experience is the best thing about that because you just realize like the story going on in my head is different than the story that's going on in your head and in big brother all you have is to create stories about what they must be thinking are they lying to <laughs> yeah. me this and that right and so you were like fuming over there whereas my story during that exact same thing was oh I've been so mean game wise to turn Turner, I'm going to try to like extend an olive branch and be nicer. Bro, no like... way. I put you on the block every single time I could. No, you, you deserve to be mean to me. Even though you are, you were just playing your own game and living but in so your funny, own reality. Like, that was the story going on in my mind. And you had a completely different story going on in your mind. And then it just was like, we were not in the same reality at all, you know, ever. Yeah, <laughs> uh, of course. And then, um, I, so now like going after the show, I yeah. think a big promoter in like, kind of us getting close at first it was like my mom talks so highly of you even it's so weird you're the only person my mom ever talks about she talks about you and she talks about taylor because there's i mean this is a side step i go everywhere yeah. when i start talking but like my mom's always like you know taylor's so mature you could probably be like that sometimes and i'm like yes mom <laughs> i get it taylor's like the most mature person ever and even i look up to taylor in that sense she's just like such a good person and then she's like and Brittany, she really has this like whole manifestation thing and my mom also is like subscribed to the same like uh, you know, mindset is you. Yeah, yeah. And um, so she's always like, you need to go on that podcast. And I'm like, mom, okay. So I was on the phone with her 10 minutes ago. I was like, mom, I'm doing it. I'm, I'm did here. Did you tell her? <laughs> yes, I did. out Turner's mom, huh? Yes, Thank Teresa. You. Teresa, girly, we love you. <laughs> I love to hear that. And I'm so excited just to talk and geek out about all this stuff with you here today because I literally will say some of my most fun conversations in the house where I felt like, even though you didn't know this and really not many people do it, but where I felt most my real self was talking to you. Like, I don't oh, know if you, you remember that one day, I think it was breakfast. We were sitting at the breakfast bar stools and we were talking like, I, I like, I was just so interested in hearing about like your, your, um, high school, like art school experience. Yeah. Do you remember us talking about that? I do um, because like, how much you remind me of my college photography teacher. <laughs> so I like that teacher, right? I heard that, right? No, I couldn't <laughs> stand her, which honestly is like, I don't even, maybe I didn't even know it, but like you were set up in my mind before I even realized it, like what my relationship would be with you for a few months. No, Turner, I so think that that is true because there were other people in the house and I like don't want to fully get into it, but there are other people in the house that reminded me of people mm -hmm. and then that can help and it can hurt, right? Of in course, a game yeah. like that, because again, you're just creating stories in your mind. And so if I automatically look like high school photography teacher we didn't like, that's like almost like a 
a transparent film over understanding ex- ex- me, you know? Yeah. And then coincidentally, the only other person that reminded me of my like outside life was Alyssa, reminded me of Megan's best friend who I'm really close with. And then lo and behold, Alyssa and I became besties. So it's like, it's so translatable. Isn't that funny. I want to talk to you because having those conversations were so much fun. I want to talk to you. You're an artist. You make furniture. You tough rugs. You make content. Like, honestly, anything you touch becomes art in some sort of way. Thank so, like, you. Thank you. Talk to me about that process. Like, kind of take us back to the beginning. And some people mm-hmm. on Instagram were wanting to hear about uh, this. So I'm curious to get into this. How did you first discover your love for artistic pursuits? Like, how did you yeah. know that's what you wanted to get into? So, like, I started making YouTube videos. I must have been like, well, honestly, before that, I was doing theater camp. OK, I, that honestly, you this, did is theater? Like a, this is a core memory that I didn't even know I had literally. So I would do every summer I would go to this theater camp and I just literally loved it. My whole school school year, I was like, oh, my God, I'm so excited to do theater camp. I can't believe we never even talked about this. Yeah. And I would like love getting on stage in front of like the thousand people at the end of the summer and put on this play and I always had so much fun and so I feel like you know that had like a little seed and then yeah. a couple of years later uh when I was yeah like nine I I bought my first camera and I started making goofy little YouTube videos right like nothing crazy I don't even know what I would have done at nine years old but I had made YouTube videos <laughs> all the time every Do single you still week have I would those make videos one. no I that is something I wish I did because then I mean when I hit middle school people like found them and I wish I didn't delete them I was like you know private was a thing you could just make them private but you know how (laughs) middle schoolers are i was like no no one can find my youtube videos um and so then i started making those videos and then that like eventually translated into um you know the video game call of duty yeah 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 okay so i would i would like then take other people's call of duty footage and edit it for them because i really enjoyed editing and so then i would like turn it around and be like hey look there's like your name and all this and it was again probably not like a totally developed product but then by the time i hit high school i was still doing that and i also went to this vocational school i originally went for carpentry but once i which is super funny because now look, look how that's doing. coming full circle exactly yeah. but then when i explored uh my week in carpentry i actually wasn't a fan at all and so i ended up getting into graphic design which like I think at that moment was perfect for me. That's where I met my best friends um, in like, you know, graphic design. And so then turn around uh, after what? Even, oh, then I went to film school after college. Right. So we're still like on the same similar trajectory. Um, and then I guess I started backpacking Asia, just did like my whole thing became like, you know, my own biggest fan. And like I'm 10 years into making YouTube videos and I, I see no success yet. Um, in high school, I made one video every single day. But the turnaround time was every day in high school. And like, I think the max one had like a thousand views. Nothing happened. But I think that's when I got to like, that's four years of perfecting. I mean, I'm not calling anything I make perfect, but like, you know, just knowing what I'm doing. Right. And so after that film school, then making films in Vietnam, wherever it may be. And then I got back. I got my film job everyone used to know me for. And then um, Big Brother. Now I'm here. So that's like a like a super sped up version of like my art history. But yeah. yeah. Wait. So let's go back to you make a YouTube video every day and you're seeing like a thousand views. How do you keep, you know, it's funny. We've actually had somebody else on the show who's a productivity coach who did a similar type thing. But I want to hear your experience. Like, how do you stick with something every day for how long did you say that you kept? It was about four years. Yeah. But wait, wait, no, no, yeah. four years. Every yeah, day yeah. And so like, I genuinely, I don't know, I was like graced with this gift by my parents or something about like <laughs> my work ethic. But also at the same time, I didn't have a job in high school, I would not work. So it's like it was a work ethic, but it wasn't because I wasn't getting anything in return. I just loved making videos so much. And if I was going to like, give myself advice back then now, I'm like, maybe it would have been more helpful to do like every other day and then focus a little more on the quality. So like the yeah. turnaround was a little bit better. And one day I'd do this and the other day I'd like make it better. But um, yeah, and a lot of them was like simple commentaries. The other time I was editing, it was all Call of Duty based. It wasn't like I was making a short film every day, but I was making a Call of Duty video because I loved gaming. I really thought my trajectory in high school was I would be like one of those gamers, right? Um, Yeah, so it was, it was fun though. I loved making those. I would get my friends involved and we would make little... Just fun skits together. How did you keep yourself motivated, though? Like when you're maybe not necessarily seeing them go like viral or go yeah. like huge. Like 
was there ever a voice in the back of your mind is like, why are we doing this every day? Or like, what was the was the purpose just for the fun of it? Or were you trying to get someplace with it? How do you keep yourself motivated? I think it's like every single time in my life I have this idea. I always feel like if I say it too early, like people will, you know, laugh or say what they're going to say. And I, I know that's just how people are. But I'm like, in the back of my mind, I'm like, just wait till they see. Just wait till <laughs> they see, bro. Because, um... Like if I was in, you know, high school making these videos and I told my younger self, I was like, yeah, but you're going to have hundreds of thousands of followers throughout different platforms when you're older. If I vocalize that in high school, people would be like, yeah, okay. I'd be like, yeah, in back of mind, wait till they see, bro, because that's going to be what it is. So <laughs> oh, they're seeing now, Turner. Yeah, they are exactly. Now. Like when, bro, sometimes I, I think of myself as like delusional because when like I would go through a breakup in high school, right? Um, someone would break up with me. I'm like, yeah, sucks for them, bro, because. Wait till they see. <laughs> like, wait, wait. I, like any like negative, I would just like put like I'd put the negative emotion onto them in just sense of like, oh, they're lost, you know. I'm, it is yeah. so true. I mean, that is so true. I mean, if they're gonna go and judge you about things, like that is completely on them. Like, yeah, exactly. It's when we start taking ownership of what other people are thinking, that's when we get all topsy turvy. But the fact that like you kept the ownership exactly where it's supposed to be, which is like on them, and you just yeah. kept doing your own thing. Wouldn't you know that kept you going? Whereas a lot of people, when they take the ownership, they're the one who stops. You know, they don't yeah. do the YouTube video every day or whatnot. Yeah, like um, yesterday I was, so I make these like furniture videos, right? And so yesterday I was in Ikea filming and I was like, I was literally internalizing this. I was like, if I was... I feel like a lot of younger people, when they go out to film in public, like no one cares what you're doing. Like if I would never see someone filming in public and be like, oh my God, why are they filming? Like who would ever think that? But yeah. a lot of people in turn are nervous to film in public, which I totally understand. But it's like, hey, I'm doing my thing. Like no one cares. Yeah. Like why would anybody think negatively of me filming in Ikea? And so um, and some of the friends with, I was like, I can tell they're like walked a hundred feet that way and watched from a distance. So like, I don't know this guy. Um, But I was like, yeah, I got to be my own biggest fan 24 seven. <sighs> Oh, I love that. Because when you are, notice when you are your biggest fan, you don't give up. You keep going and then things amount from that. And you're doing what you love to do, you know? Like yeah. but if you if you if you took in that internal chatter, it would stop you. And what a shame it would be for you and for all of us who get to benefit from watching you create these awesome things. Yeah, exactly. Uh, like um I I don't know if I learned this when I was in Big Brother, but um you know the like upstairs DR where she, this woman would just yeah. like consistently anytime you had a bad time like give you like words of wisdom in in like by the handful and one time she said i, I wrote this down before because i was like i know that i'm gonna think about yeah. this in our so she said your she said this word for word just busted out she goes your mindset can turn heaven into hell or hell into heaven and i was like that is literally exactly true like you can be like for example, I, I'm living in a van at 20, right? Yeah. I was having a ton of fun. I loved it. I, but like anybody, like I could see how someone would be like, oh yeah, I live in a van. I'm in Colorado. It's negative six and I don't have heat. That could also be hell. Like I totally right. get that. So it really is all about mindset. Isn't that so interesting? You can turn heaven into hell or hell into heaven. I yeah. mean, that is so true. And that's what I love about it because it can be the exact same circumstance. Like what you said, like living in a van in Colorado, negative six. And yeah. one person could be having an amazing time. The other person feeling, woe is me, sorry for myself or whatever, however they must be feeling. And it's the exact same van. And it's exact yeah, same exactly. circumstances, exact same place. So talk to me about this, Turner. So it sounds like it was a pretty fluid process from nine years old, creating those initial YouTube videos to like now you're a professional creator, artist, maker. I mean, what do you even call yourself? Like you That's do it all. That's a good question. I, I, so I always struggle to find like a label for myself. Cause I don't, <laughs> it's not like I don't want to say influencer because when yeah. I was younger, I would have like died to be like, yeah, I'm an influencer. Right. right? But, um, but, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and so I, I started like <laughs> owning, I started owning that label. Cause I caught myself for a while being like, yeah, I'm like an influencer, but like, you know, not like that type of influencer, but it's like, you don't need to like preface it. Like that's your job. Be proud of it. So like, yeah, I just call myself an influencer. Like you're, it is what it is. You're an influencer. Um, and that makes so much sense because you do create content and what you're also creating that content about. Well, you create content about a lot of different things, but it, you're building this furniture. Now you're doing the rugs. Did, did little Turner always know that he'd grow up to become in, uh, you know, an influencer and an artist, like in the fact that you created these things, did, like, what did you think you were going to be when you grow up and now compared to who you are now? So when I was a real small kid, like uh, seven ish, I I would always just say artist. I love drawing. 
but my drawing skills weren't really good. I was just, you know, scribbling on paper, calling it a drawing. Yeah. Um, but then, you know, high school, I'm, I'm a gamer, bro. That's my thing. I am playing video games to join FaZe Clan, if you ever heard of that. And then I actually one... haven't heard of that one. I'll admit that. Oh, yeah. It's just like a professional Call of Duty team. That was oh, my okay, goal. Okay. And then um, once I found like the avenue of editing, I was like, oh, wait, now I'm in the artistic side of what other people are like really playing the game. And then um, so I attribute a lot of that also when I hit high school, I met this kid who's in a lot of my story. His name is David Kratz. I talk about him all the time online. Oh, I talked about him in the Big Brother him. house. Big brother, yeah. yeah. And um, so when I got to high school and got to graphics where he was also, he was also pursuing YouTube at the time. So we can make YouTube videos together. And then like we would bounce off each other like, hey, how about, um, you know, when we're 14, I'm like, hey, my mom will drive you to your house and we'll make a YouTube video. Maybe next week your mom can drive you to my house. Um, but then, you know, once we got cars, we became 16. We would do that every day. He was a part of like the YouTube videos. And now he coincidentally, he uh, he was over last night. He's visiting from Vegas. Um, but like, I think that relationship really helped craft me. And so like, is it you're, important you're... to have collaborators like that? Do you think for? Yeah, I, I think so. Uh, I think like, at the end of the day, I would have been doing the same thing, but it helped a lot. Like, you know, having a group of friends that was equally as interested in like, you know, it, it's like joining a, a theater group as opposed to just acting yourself. Like you would probably do the same thing, but it's really good to have that, like, you know, bouncing one on one energy just yeah, to play that's a better way of to yeah. and to, to build upon. I mean, who wants to do monologues all day long? Like, you know, <laughs> yeah, thinking, right. Like you need to be working with other people. And yeah, the, 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 the energy that's there. I totally get that. Um, so Talk to me about like your creative process. So like mm -hmm. you're creating, you're, uh, you're making furniture, you're tufting rugs, you're, you're creating all these amazing things. What's that like for you? Um, you yeah. say you're going to start a new project or what's kind of the, the flow that we don't see in the reels, you know, totally. showing how so, you create it. So my, well, so my next project, there's like that beam where my finger oh, is, yeah, oh my, yeah. this is impossible to like navigate where my hand is, but I have two <laughs> beams like right there. And so yeah. I'm going to make a huge bookshelf. Granted, I've never made a bookshelf. I don't know how I'm going to do that, but, um, that's the same thing when I start anything. Like there's that concrete side table. This is yeah. a hard game. I'm not going to master, but this <laughs> table, right? Um, oh, the it's like, one, yeah, that, that you made with the balloons, right? Yeah. The, yeah. I'll link to that, that reel guys in case you, he made this awesome table out of concrete with these balloons. I mean, it's so cool. It's like this bulbous looking, like really unique. <laughs> your favorite sort of... word, bulbous. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it's your least. Actually, oh, probably, right? yeah. <laughs> um, but like, yeah, I never know going into it what it's going to become, which I almost feel like makes the content because in a story, right, you want like ups and downs. Um, yeah. I mean, almost similar to like, I only reference this a lot because where we met, which I think is a huge part of our foundation, like, yeah. you know, our big brother season, if you yeah. were watching like... As a, as a viewer, there's so many ups and downs, which is what made it entertaining. It's not just downs. That's boring. It's not just ups. That's also boring. So many ups and downs, um, whether you're a fan of mine, Taylor's, yours. It, that's what makes it entertaining. So in my content, when there's like, oh my God, I don't know how I'm going to do this. I don't know how I'm going to do that. Like, that's what I think makes a story as yeah. opposed to, you know, when you open your phone, everything looks perfect anyway. Like every damn Instagrammer is making everything look perfect. I, I almost feel like the pitfalls of my projects is what makes the bulk of the uh of the segment so that's so interesting because i was going to ask you here you're like i'm going to make this uh this bookcase i've never done this before and yet you decide to continue doing it whereas i know so many other people would be like i've never done that i can't do that yeah. and so you're basically saying like it's the fact that there could be pitfalls here that yeah, makes exactly. this interesting to pursue yeah, like that damn balloon video. I mean, every video it takes a month to make. It's like so not time effective how I make content. I only upload twice a month because I literally cannot make a video every day. I look at creators. I make a video every day. I'm like, that is incredible. I wish I could be that. But like, I just literally could never. And so I'm taking a month to make the video, but I almost feel like it shows. Like if you watch one of my videos, it looks like a damn production. And like, so maybe some like, in all ways online, I've learned to like teach myself, you're not gaining, you are losing, right? And maybe that's a weird way to look at it, but say it's been three weeks, right? And I haven't uploaded a video. I, I'll see followers drop because that's just what it is. If you're not gaining, you're losing. And so then I need to like be like, all right, don't rush this project. Just lose some followers for a week. It's going to pay off. You're going to post it. Another big boost. You'll lose some, another big boost. That's like how social media works. So I just need to keep telling myself, don't rush something. It's all going to be worth it in the end. And thus far, like my faith in that 
that has worked out great. And so I maybe I should upload more, but I'm trying to not rush anything. I love that because I feel like we live in a society right now, especially because social media, where it's like you got all these people that are creating these like little B-roll of them on the beach and a text (laughs) overlay. And then it's just spitting out like multiple times a day. And yet you're taking a completely different process here being like, I'm going to invest like a month into this. How does that feel when you're like, okay, you're watching the loss? Like, what's mm-hmm. going through your mind when you're pursuing creating things that take time? Because I feel yeah. like so many people, and I hear this from my clients, and I hear this from people who listen to the show, like, they're scared to do things that take time, because what if they put all this time into it, and it completely flops, and then they've lost, quote unquote, yeah. that time? How do you deal? Do those fears ever come up? And if so, or some version of them, how do you deal with that thought? Of course. So like, I think of the people I like watching the most, that would be like Casey Neistat, right? He goes six months without uploading sometimes, but I am always there for the next video. Um, like he had, he had this podcast called Couples Therapy and it stopped in 2019. But if he uploaded again with that podcast, I'm you're there subscribed, for you're it. There, you're yes, listening. exactly. <laughs> and so it's just like that. I'm like, all right, if the audience that is really there to enjoy me and likes what I do, I think they'll wait. Granted, I post stories so like people still get to they engage still... with my face and like remember what I'm doing and I and I update people. But uh, I just it, it literally is faith. I'm not religious at all, but I do have faith in myself. And so that I will um I'll make the extra effort to bet on myself every time. And I remember I, so (laughs) I play Fortnite every single day. Once I'm done work, it's like 9 30 PM, me and my best friends, we play Fortnite. And so I remember I was on Fortnite with my friends and and it was the day before I was uploading that, uh, stone video. And I was like, I don't want to be dramatic, but if this video doesn't do well, and I just spent a month and a half and all my resources on it, I'm going to go insane. And I was like, but that's what it is. That's the game I'm playing. And so every time for the past eight months, it's paid off. So at some point I need to be like, all right, I'm eight months deep into it pays off every time. I just need to let friggin' God take the wheel at this point. Yeah. Yeah. But but you know, and you've built that up. I mean, it's, I mean, it's kind of cliche, but it's like big risk, big reward. Um, Literally. Exactly. Because I feel like so many people are unwilling to take the big risks and like invest the time and invest the resources, all those things. Um, And so they just take these little mini risks, but they're just seeing little <laughs> mini reward. And that doesn't feel good either. So it's like you really have to. And I feel like I've learned that from you the most, like even just like Thank side you. personal conversations we've been having is you're changing my mindset around that where it's like, OK, I've done the little risk thing for a year now. And yeah. that's like, you know, it pays off in little ways little ways. Yeah. And I'm, I don't want little ways. I'd rather go all in on something. And just seeing you be an example of that is a good reminder in this day and age when I feel like so many of us are like instant gratification. Like we want it to just be that easy that like the big things require big, big inputs, big investments. And you just have to like you, like you say, bet on yourself. That was like one of the biggest lessons I took away from Big Brother was like, like after after Alyssa went and I yeah. just like went <laughs> yeah. in like feast mode, like blow shit up mode. <laughs> that was like, oh, and after Michael left, I was just like, yeah. F all this, like I'm betting on myself. And if you haven't learned that lesson, anyone who's listening, if you haven't learned that lesson, there's so much freedom that just comes from like, OK, if the if I if there's a downfall here, I take ownership of that. But also like when it when it does go off like your videos do like that's all you too like you and, took and that like you, risk and, and that's a huge part of mindset just like you say like when you bet on yourself and big brother that's also when you won that veto that saved your life right right and so yeah. it, and that paid off in in turn so it's yeah. and i mean that goes right back to uh manifest destination manifestation like it is yeah. also in the mindset um yeah yeah because what if it is and i mean this is obviously what like i would would say but like it is the it is the belief in yourself, the bet on yourself that is creating that success. Yeah, like because how you show up in the video and how you you know market it and how you uh, present it and how you edit it and everything is influenced by your belief in that. Like this is something worthwhile. This is something great. Like I want to share this with people. And that there's energy attached to that. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah, and also when you like doubt yourself and you're so far on your timeline and it's like look look at where i am now sorry my i said uh sriracha cauliflower before we started it's clearly not going well (laughs) with my voice but and you to like look at where you are on your journey and be like oh my god i've come so far like doubting myself now what do i look like doing that we're already like at level seven out of ten why would i then be taking steps back um and it's yeah I, i mean 
in turn, I, I look at my path. It was definitely not a narrow path and nobody's I don't I don't think is like um I remember like in school we'd be like all right what's your five-year plan like how can you make a five-year plan if I made a five-year plan and stuck to it I would never went on big brother I didn't know what that was until 2019 um and so it's like yeah you always need to be I don't even know where I went with this but always being adaptable and always being open-minded and hyping yourself up is like the biggest things I think I've learned in adult. Yeah. Well, I'm so glad that you mentioned that, Turner, because that was something I wanted to talk to you about. Like you have shifted gears quite a few times in your life, yeah. like artistically yeah. in your business, like you, like you're all those things that you're saying. You were a video editor. Then you had then you had the thrift store, the rug shack. Yeah. Now you're a furniture maker, influencer, content creator. Like how, when and how do you internally know when it's time to evolve and, sh- and shift? That that's a really good question. I just think it's off. This is going to sound crazy, but it's off of vibes, bro. Like it is literally off of vibes. So just the, for, what do you, what do you mean by that? Off of vibes? Yeah. Like, how do you know? It's like a lot of the times I get this like inkling of a thought in my head, and you know sometimes a passing thought they come in every day, thousands of them. But when one sticks, I'm like, I just need to go with my gut. Um, when I decided to start uh, start backpacking uh for months on end i everyone was like why would you be backpacking with no one you know in vietnam and you have a dream of buying a motorcycle even though you've never ridden a motorcycle and driving it thousands of miles throughout southeast asia i was like i don't know it's just what i want to do and i'm gonna do it and i'm gonna figure it out and it's like i'm either gonna do what i want or i'm gonna die trying and uh like even if i was dying trying say it's like brian cranston doesn't get his like breakout role until he's in his 50s like if he wasn't pursuing that his whole entire life that never would have happened and so at a certain point just like in high school i'm like all right maybe i'm making videos for four years straight now and i won't hit my stride until eight years from now which is when i really hit in uh with big brother um but it's like i will die trying if i care enough and i do care enough about what i pursue so it's always worth it I think there's something there, Turner. I really think that there is because I have a very similar experience with that. Like not to get too dark, but like when I was really going through depression on the other side of that, I was like, fuck this. I have to become a hypnotherapist because that's what I want to do. And I want to start my own business because what's the alternative? Be depressed Uh, and like die trying. I mean, like, like it was like, it was like, well, of course I have to go for this and there's risks here, but I'd rather die trying and doing what I love than rotting away, wishing that I could do things and putting limits on myself. Like we've tried that route. It's not too great. (laughs) Let's go the other way now. And I just, I just love that. Like, and isn't it interesting that when you do that, when you don't mm-hmm. let the fears take over and you do it anyways, because you're like, I'm going to do this or die trying. That's when it ends up working out. At least that's the stories that I hear. That's what it feels like. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And um, like before uh, we started recording, you were like, ah, like, how what are your feelings on mindset or uh, manifestation? And I was yeah. like, it's a more of a background thought as opposed to like looking myself in the mirror and like, you know, putting a post-it note there, doing whatever other not traditional, but whatever works for other yeah, people. Yeah. Um, I just have, everyone has their own like unique version of manifestation. And yeah. so mine is always like, and I, sometimes I think I'm full of myself, but I'm like, that can't be it because like something's working. And so I literally, I tell myself every day I, in you know, I'm not saying I am the greatest creator to ever live, but if I'm not telling myself that, then like, what am I exactly doing? Am I like saying, oh yeah, he's better than me, but I'm just going to try. No, like in my head, I, I'm like the leader of this ship. So I better hope that I'm getting to the destination. It's like, what other cruise ship captain is going to be like, Oh, hopefully we get there. Maybe you know, we'll maybe. Get there. What do you think, guys? <laughs> yeah. Do you think we'll get there? I hope. Exactly. So like, so like if I'm on a plane, like the pilot better think he's the best damn pilot ever. And so that's exactly how I think about my mind. I freaking <laughs> love that. That makes so much sense because if you're not going to do it, who is? And let me just point this out. Who is, if you rely on other people to do that for you, that can be really sucky. Like, I definitely know that that was my experience with Big Brother is mm-hmm. like, well, we're both been blessed with very supportive partners. I know we yeah. talked about that a lot. 100%. Shout out Megan Belmonte. Oh, my God. Love her. Shout out Steven. Right. Shout out Steven. <laughs> yes. Just like the old days. Shout out. Yep. 
And I know that was huge for me to get used to is I think I hadn't realized since I'd been with Steven for 14 years, like it, I, I hadn't realized how much he had pumped me up. And therefore, when I couldn't talk to him every day, that like I almost I like my in my own pump myself up engine needed to be like restarted because it just wasn't yeah. as strong as I, I had thought. I thought I was doing that, but really I was borrowing his thoughts about me a lot mm-hmm. of the times. And so Big Brother taught me this like, oh, no, I need to be like, yeah, I'm the best, you know, and what you say like that we were giving the example before when you bet on yourself like that's when the things start happening and so i just love that like of course you need the pilot to believe that they're yeah. the best and that's how you are and think about the kind of artist you show up as when you believe that as opposed to the artist you'd be if you didn't those are yeah very, exactly very i'd be two like different versions or it's like we also mentioned this briefly but like okay filming in public you're if you just walk in somewhere and set up a camera no one's gonna stop you but if you like shyly like hey can i film here like people are gonna be like all right there's not enough like you need like a little umph to to do what you want to do just like like acting like you know what you're doing honestly is a huge help and and even yeah like like, he knows he's supposed to be here yeah exactly (laughs) like i'll like you are (laughs) (laughs) yeah like the first time i started woodworking uh which was honestly seven eight months ago not even that long ago um, yeah i wanted to ask you about that because we never talked about furniture in the house yeah i never even thought about furniture after big brother so like take that for instance like talk about big shifts like you Mm -hmm. weren't making furniture at least you know not in the way that you do now during big brother so like how did that come to be? And so, like, like I know during Big Brother, we're talking, like, Rug Shack, this and that. And then all of a sudden, it's yeah. like, I remember my, you know, this is so funny. My dad texts me that you close Rug Shack. Cause my parents love you, and they follow you. And they're oh, like, go. Charner's closing Rug Shack. And I thought he was literally pranking me, because that's all we had talked about. Like, <laughs> yeah. you know, shout out Rug Shack. So talk to me about, like, that shift. Because obviously, that must have been, like, an intuitive nudge of some sort. Like, I'm going to go and and be an influencer and I'm going to go and change and now do like furniture stuff. Like how do you ride those waves of those changes Mm -hmm. when you're listening to your gut on things like that? So like big brother ends, we spend whoever you are spends a little bit of time in LA, whether it's a day, a month, I spent a few weeks there. And then I got home and I like walked in the rug shack and I don't even know what it was. I was just like, this isn't me. Like this is, this was me for a year last year but i got in the building and it's funny because megan has recently told me she's like my aunt literally said the second you get home you're not gonna want to do this anymore and that's so interesting because like i my every single waking hour went into that business for a year and so to think that oh a year from now you won't be doing this shop you're opening would be crazy i I invest like i got a lot of return on investment but i invested 30 grand in my own money i didn't get a freaking loan yeah renovated that place i remember you telling us stories about like all the blood sweat and tears that went into (laughs) that that um that establishment exactly and so like so far my gut has never let me down like gut feelings and so i i literally walked in the store and i was like yeah, it's cool. Like, you know, whatever, but it's not me anymore. And I just think being willing to accept that helped me a lot. And I have always wanted to um, make content online. And I was like, okay, I'm in a position now where it makes sense. I remember getting off of Big Brother, I had 90K, right? And in my, literally, this this sounds crazy. This is when I like walked the line of being full of myself versus just confidence and like backing myself up. But I was like, all right, I know I have 90K now. And if I told anybody this at the time, they would laugh. The, they'd laugh at me. I'd be like, but I'm I'm going to be the most followed person from BB24 on Instagram. I knew it. If I said that on Twitter, oh my God, it would I would be the laughing sock of the site. <laughs> they would but, have hung you out to dry, but... <laughs> yes, exactly. And I was like, I that's my going to be my goal. I hit that goal a couple weeks ago. And so really? it's like... Yeah, yeah. I um, Are you now? I didn't know that. I, I am two two 235,000 strong. And so, yes. But it's like, and listen, that sounds like I'm saying that because like whoever it was, whether it was you or whether it was my own mother or whether it was, um, you know, Monty or Taylor, whoever it was, that's my goal. I don't care who I'm passing. That's just was my goal. And so I was like, I'm going to make that come true. Now, a lot of the content after I left the house, I didn't exactly know what I was doing. Like they were getting one through 3000 likes. And I was like, all right, it's not looking good. Um, but like, um, since then, like I just kept pursuing what I wanted. I kept thinking about that weird little dream I had. And I was like, I'm going to go until the damn wheels fall off. And so, yeah, we, we hit that last week and I was like, yes. Um, but, yeah. Rats, by the way. And I mean, that's just, that's, 
that's so cool. So it's having that vision. It's having that gut instinct. And so let's go back to that moment. You walk in a rug shack, you look around and you're like, wow, this isn't me. Mm-hmm. A lot of people... Now, you're not a lot of people, but a lot of, of people would be like, yeah. how do they feel like they're not giving up or worried about what others think? Like, I think a lot of people like I was a serial entrepreneur before I became a hypnotherapist. I made yeah. jewelry. I was a web designer. That's I was very a interesting. Designer. I did all these things. And I know like when I would start these businesses and then they just wouldn't feel like me. So I can very yeah. much understand what you're talking about. And then I would shift and I always like had so much like me younger. I always have so much like I would say shame around that, but just like, oh, my God, I felt like, you know, the boy that cries wolf. I was like the girl who cried business. Like that's what I felt like. And it felt like almost to the point where I changed so much that people were like, oh, Britney's business, like nice pat her on the head. You know, I literally could not relate to this anymore. Sorry to jump in. But I remember when I when I started rugs during the pandemic, um, like when I ordered the first rug tufting gun that I got, I told told a couple people in my family and they were like, all right, like this will be fun for a month. And I'm like, like in my head, I'm like, why would you say that to me? Like, what's wrong with you? But like, also I get it. Like I literally, whether it was the video editing or when I was backpacking, uh, which was very, like a very formative half year, but I, I left early from, uh, I was in China or something. I forget where I was, but, um, I left early because it was just like, I was getting homesick. I missed friends. I had a relative yeah. pass and I was like, I'm just going to go home. But other people frame that as like quitting, but that's when like turning your mindset into heaven or hell really comes to fruition because like people can be telling me I'm quitting, but I was like, oh no, I had a really great couple of months. This is going to be like crucial for like my growing ages going forward. And um, I felt very positive about that. So you can't like let people get in your head about that because if I really thought I was just kept giving up, then I don't know where my life would have ended up or when I um like before Big Brother, I never, ever talk about this, but I also really don't talk about my personal life on my Instagram page anyway. It's like, yeah. you know, what I'm building. So yeah. I'm totally fine with getting into this. Um, But like I literally felt for years like the most hated person on the Internet for so long. Like I would I, I had like 3000 followers and I would like wake up my phone and be like, oh, 700 messages telling me people hate me. That's awesome. And I was like, but I was like, I don't care. It's like the same exact moment where I'm like, all right. Wait and see, bro. This is gonna, this yep. is gonna be a fun little payoff. And now there's literally like videos from this year. I'm, I know there's one YouTube short and my big brother casting photo is the, is the photo. And it's like, you know, failed whatever it, editors from YouTube, whatever. And it's my big brother casting photo. It has 11 million views. I'm like, so 11 million people clicked on my big brother casting photo to like, you know, dog on me in a YouTube short. I'm like, whatever. It is what it is. Like, you're never going to control the minds of others. You can really only control your own, what you, what you have going on. So it's so important. that experience helped coming out of the Big Brother house? Oh, my God. I mean, God, I don't know yes. about you. I, mean, I feel like all of us in some way got some sort of hate because it's yeah. just Big Brother. Yeah, and, but do you think yes. like you like you already is like you're like, this is not my first rodeo. Like I can deal oh my with God. I was like, opinion. Yeah. Like I, some people from our season got out of the show and that really did affect them. And I sympathize with that because I was affected by that for years. And so when I got out of the Big Brother house, I was like, oh. 70,000 people are mad at me, whatever, been there. Like, I couldn't (laughs) have possibly cared less. And that, like, in turn, like, I feel like because of that, I, you know, started, like, tweeting memes out or whatever on Twitter. And people, like, came around. They're like, all right, it's just Turner. You know, he's a quirky little guy, just doesn't care about anything. And I'm like, yeah, like, that's that even goes to show, like, every single tough time is weathering you for another storm. And that that storm genuinely weathered me to know how to act once I got out of the Big Brother house. And just like, there were so many controversies, like even pre Big Brother, bro, I was mega canceled. Everyone hated me before they like saw me on the show. And I was like, that's just my life. All right. So I get out of the Big Brother house. I, I have that laptop with my sequester manager and I'm Googling myself. I'm like, oh, I was canceled months ago. Awesome. Whatever. Um, Great. <laughs> I know. And then I'm like, I was like, was everyone canceled? Oh, me just before anyone even heard me talk. Great. That's helpful. So you got that. You were like, people didn't like you at the very beginning, right? I had like a 1% like popularity poll. Like even, I mean, with Peace of Love, Daniel had 30. I'm like, what am I doing wrong, bro? And so I, I, I just think I get judged before people really know me, but it's a story of my life. So I, I'd rather prove them wrong, then prove them right and just continue being myself. And either, I mean, I, I don't know about kill them with kindness. I kill them with something, but I just keep being myself no matter what. That is so, oh, I love that. And I literally wish I would have had more of, I don't 
want to call it a thick skin because it's like, you know, well, whatever. But like experience yeah. with it helps, you know, helps you understand that. But like, so, okay, so it sounds like you recognize that urge. Other people might be calling it giving up or other people might be saying, oh, they're switching gears to this or that. But it's just is it believing in that conviction within yourself, that like gut feeling that like this is my next chapter, like this is where I'm evolving to? Is it that belief that keeps you going kind of continually in the direction that feels best for you moving forward? Yeah, yeah. And I think even in the moment, it feels less like intense because it's like looking back on so many of my decisions, I'm like, that was a dumb decision, but it <laughs> paid off. So who cares? But it's like, yeah, at the at the time, like try even trying out for Big Brother twenty four when um like I don't even, like to for a scope of ideas. I remember the month before leaving for Big Brother, the store made like thirty grand. Right, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna leave this behind and just do my own do do like go for TV like that doesn't sound like a great idea, but like in my head, I was like, this is what I want to do. I'm gonna do it. For example, I remember when I was in high school and I. I would try working like I got a job at Bur this is such a goofy ass story yeah. but I I had a job at Burger King and they wouldn't let me off for a Halloween party understandably but I was yeah. like okay then I'm just going to quit like I want I'm going to do what I want to do like I'll find another job like I'll go work at freaking McDonald's they don't care that I quit Burger King so it's always just about doing what I want to do doing what feels right and a lot of the times you know I'm trying to be sensible right um and weigh my options but I've just never got myself into too bad of a position no. so it's always just i mean there's so, very you know. little that you couldn't undo like yeah, truly exactly. undo i think in our minds we think it's like this oh no life or death decision but there <laughs> yeah. are very few d d like even if right now you decided oh shit i made a terrible mistake i need to go create rug shack again you could exactly. go find a spot and create that again if you wanted to like yeah. there's very few things that we can't undo and it's so funny that you tell that story i have the exact story of that turner like i literally only mine is even more ridiculous because i was working on my business i was a receptionist at this like restaurant company with this like god-awful boss and i was working on my business while i was at work like yeah. i was i shouldn't have been doing that i was working on my own business while i was at work and he caught me and he was like you can't do this like you cannot work on your business during your working hours and so i was like oh well then i leave then i'm yeah I'm <laughs> yeah it's and like then, in, then he ends yeah. up backtracking he's like you can do it during lunch and like if you don't have anything else to do you can do it and so he mm -hmm. ended up backtracking and then i end up staying but like it was just funny like what there must be something that goes in your mind when you really are locked into like creating something for yourself that it's like you're going to do it at all costs. And if things in the outside world get in the way, then you just get rid of those things. <laughs> like Exactly. And, you know, it, even like you feel like playing Big Brother. Right. I was like, mm -hmm. I need to look out for myself. So I don't think I always did the morally right thing but i w i was always my biggest advocate and i mean not like advocate like in the sense i'm like hey guys look at me i'm great but you know <laughs> yeah. i'm hyping myself up i'm like i you just need to do what you need to do and you yeah. need to do whatever you think you need to do because that always works and so like a lot of what I got heat for outside of the Big Brother house right when we left was like how I treated Joseph at Dire Fest. And it was like, I get that. And Joseph is my best friend in the world. Yeah. Um, he's uh, what a groomsman at my wedding coming up. And so he's he's going to be one of the guys standing there. Like, I literally cannot talk like highly enough of this guy. Um, but it's like, you know, I would I would do any of what I did again just to look out for myself in yeah. these situations. And I, I also think that's like it's not bad to look out for yourself. You know, it's you need to. You need to be the one who gets yourself there. Because then, like we were talking about before, who is looking out if not? And exactly. if you do, and even if you are lucky enough to have somebody who's super supportive, then you're almost on life support. Like I was talking about before with like yeah. feeling like I needed to create my own belief in myself during Big Brother because I'd gotten so used to somebody like pumping me full of belief, you know, in that regard, yeah. like of like pumping me up in that way. And so it was like, you got to look out for yourself no matter what, especially when you're playing a game. And I think a lot of people, no, I yeah, mean, totally. this is like easy to say, 
say, but a lot of people think that they they know a very specific version of us. They know us under a tremendous amount of stress with no sleep playing a game for lots of money. That's yeah. the version they know. <laughs> mm-hmm. And totally. then they can deduce other things outside of that, whatever. But like, you know, and I think that's even been interesting getting to know like somebody like you or any of our castmates. Like we now know each other more outside the house than we ever did inside the house because it's been long enough now. And, you know, it, it, there's even certain things that kind of begin to surprise me, you know, about you or about other people that it's like, oh, I understand you now in context of your life, you know? Yeah, yeah, totally. Speaking of which, how in the world, Turner, knowing how artistic you are and how much of a part of your life that is, how did you go freaking three months, you know, microwaving a a tie-dye shirt is the the extent of your (laughs) artistic uh, outlet. Like, how was that? Now that I know you outside Mm -hmm. the house, that makes me be more in awe. How was it like to shut off, I mean, essentially shut off that part of yourself for that long? Yeah, I mean, like, definitely the extent of it was making this damn shirt, which wasn't much, like, artistic I love that you're wearing it, by the way, today. Yes, of course. Everyone who sees the video. This honestly, like, now that I, just real quick sidestep, now that I make videos, I wear my, these tie-dye shirts in, like, every single video I make. Every one is, like, the shirts we made together. Every single one. Um, But, so, yeah, when I was... Oh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, when I was in the house, yeah, you couldn't really make much, but I mean, so week number one, it was a lot of like awe and admiring what was going on. Cause like we did live in like this crazy Hollywood set. It was beautiful. And whether you like that style or not, cause it was very chaotic. I love how that house looked. It and was, so I love our theme. Yeah, exactly. And like the big color TV sign in the front or like that big pool sign. It was just incredible living there. And so then like after a while, I, did get worried. I was like, am I going to like forget how to do a lot of the stuff I've been doing for the past like decade? Oh, and granted, I only got better at it, I think, after Big Brother. But um, yeah. yeah, there was one thing I honestly didn't really struggle. I, my biggest struggle was like missing Megan, um, finding like pure relationships that I didn't think were just game related. And yeah. then I think those are like survival instincts almost. So then the yeah. artistic stuff came came second. But like, yeah, I think... There was an art in building relationships so much so that I was really focused on that. <laughs> that was a creative pursuit in that house. Yes, it was definitely literally. a different like, form of it. Like there was like uh, I remember week one uh, when everyone's like trying to get to know each other. And I love getting to know people. But it's like I just I can't function without caffeine. I have a really t- hard time doing that. And it's not like quirky. It's like a serious problem. I have a real addiction. And so <laughs> um, when people are like, I haven't had my coffee in the morning and people are like, oh, what do you do for work? I'm like, bro, just like leave me alone for like 10 minutes but like you can't say that so you have to be like we quickly learned we quickly learned yeah yeah exactly and so like and then you see like so many like huge personalities like i remember waking up like day number four and i see like monty pooch and kyle dancing at 7 a.m i'm like what is wrong with you people and like you know love them but i just it was and i feel like you could probably like relate to it being a little more introverted in that context like I think in my personal life, I'm the most outgoing person I know. But in that setting, I'm like nowhere even near 15th right? place. I'm like, right? how do these people have like, how did like was me getting cast a fluke? Because this doesn't seem like I belong in this. I mean, I think that's so funny because I know so many of us leftovers had that same sentiment yeah. of feeling like, yeah, I'm the same way. I am like the outgoing, funny girl in my in my group. But I get into this and I'm like a wet rag. Like what? What the heck? Like it was so jarring to be in that and it just, yeah, I get overly stimulated very easily, too. And so it's you you slink back. But then if you slink back too much or if people have a certain idea of you, like I know for me, it was definitely like I had to I had to play a completely different game than I ever intended on playing from the moment Pooch picked me for backstage. And so it's like <laughs> yeah. all plans went just flew out the window. And then it was like you could never you know, it was I mean, I guess I eventually did somewhat recover, but not it not ever really. Totally. Um, and like it's- it's almost similar to when you see people online and you don't realize it's like a three dimensional person, even if they're showing their highlights. Um, yeah. like once you see what their real life is like, it's a little different. And so I remember week two, I was talking to Monty or Kyle. It was one of them. No. Okay. It was Kyle week two. And yeah. I thought he was like such a big personality, but then we were alone for a second. He's like, bro, I'm so sick of talking to people. And like, <laughs> I was like, that is so helpful to know because I never would have thought that of you. And then, you know, week 
eight and it's Monty. And he's like, bro, if I talk to one more person today, I'm going to go insane. And I was like, bro, I never would have thought that of you. Like, that's honestly helpful for me to internalize. I'm not the only one who's going crazy here. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, honestly, that was that was, I think, probably one of the reasons why Michael and I became friends so quickly was like, I just we just had a conversation that was very similar to that, that I was like, oh, you just kind of remind me of not <laughs> yeah. somebody here, but somebody in my outside life that I would like jive with. And that's that was just helpful to have that context. I mean, that's interesting to hear, though. So you were, I mean, obviously you were admiring kind of the artistic um, elements of the experience and like, yeah. well, the set and this and that. But it's interesting that you kind of talk about like <laughs> survival mode, like, you mm-hmm. know, because that's what they say, like when you're in survival mode, the excess, like say somebody's in fi- fight or flight, right? For like, they have anxiety for some reason. This isn't yeah. what you're talking about, but like just using that as an example, like um, when your your um nervous system is able to like be regulated again that's when you can you, they say feed and breathe like because all the other systems can be turned off because you're just focusing on staying alive exactly. and it almost reminds me of that like the artistic systems within you yeah. could be turned off because you were just focused on staying alive like Literally. there's not excess resources for art when you're not in a like a safe regulated place you know which big brother is not a safe regulated place <laughs> yeah, whatsoever <definitely> <laughs> Especially um, during our, do uh, you remember our, during uh, what what comp was it that we both like almost died doing? Was it? Uh, oh, it was Otev. Yeah, Otev. Th- that was a real survival instinct. Like, like your hand is broken open, my knee is broken open. Oh <laughs> um, my yeah, God. That was yeah, because isn't that the one? That's when I gouged my knee, which I still have a yeah. very prominent scar about, by the way. And then you you dislocated something. Yeah, I dislocated and my I, kneecap. That is yeah, so it's and like, I remember you tried to like time yeah. out and nothing happened. It, and that was the like the eerie that was scary crazy. thing. That 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 was like an episode of Black Mirror when I tried <laughs> timing out the whole show. I was like, there's a real problem here. And everyone just everyone's like Keep going. Entertain us. And I was like, bro, I like I'm really trying to stop the show. And then I was like, all right, I guess I'll like start crawling and swimming through like goop with like a broken knee. Um, I yeah, that was that crazy. Same, I can't imagine being you in that instance. But I had that same <laughs> yeah. moment that I was like, shit, this stuff doesn't this this game doesn't stop for no one. Like, no, it's like nothing. literal survival mode sometimes. It is like, survival <laughs> genuinely. mode. But no, it's like a fun summer game show. Yeah, yeah. Families watch this. It's just we're hanging out. (laughs) So talk to me about this. We were talking about being creative and things like that. Do you ever like how do you come up with the next idea for the next project? Like, where do you get your inspiration from? Does it ever dry up? I'm curious to hear about that. Yeah, totally. I think like. I don't know what it was my like the work ethic I was talking about before so it's yeah I've never needed to like take a break with working even if I I feel like if you looked at my profile and you didn't know my explanation of it takes me a month to make a video then you would think I'm just taking a break but I've really never gotten burnt out on like creative stuff which I feel really blessed with just the burnout doesn't exist because it's my passion and so my next idea is like even last night at midnight I'm on like Pinterest, right? Looking at furniture ideas, or I'm really into like books about architects and their lives. And so then it'll like show furniture throughout the book. It's a really weird niche thing to be into, but just books about architects. So then I will start like seeing things that they've made. And I mean, inspiration can really hit anywhere. Um, and then a little bit of inspiration goes in if like, you know, I have to tie a brand deal into it. So let's see this, uh, like this bench that I made that's over here. That was my last yeah. video that just went nuts. Um, th- I mean, the only reason there's a hole in it is because, uh, cat brand advertising it. Otherwise yeah. I wouldn't have made the hole. You did that so, so seamlessly, which is like so cool. Thank like, you. That's, so how do you, <laughs> yeah. that's gotta be a little tough. You're like, how in the world do I tie in a cat brand feeder thing to this? Like, yeah, how do you go about thinking that? So like, first off, it's like a mix of like, there's two sides of my brain working. It's like the (laughs) brand part, which is almost like the logical side and then the art side. And it's like, they're both scrolling on the same phone, but they're thinking about different things. And so when I, uh, I watched this YouTube video, um, about somebody building a bench similar to this and I was like, oh, perfect. I want to make that. So it goes on like a list of ideas in a Pinterest board that, and then I get a, uh, my agent is Alyssa Lopez from Big Brother 23. And she hits me and he's like, Hey, do you want to work with this brand? And I'm like, okay, how could I translate it over here on this page? And like, which one would it fit into? And so, um, like I have a, there's a VPN company and I'm, I still don't know how the hell I'm going to put a VPN into a physical thing. But then I was like, okay, 
if you are on a VPN and you buy something in another part of the world, something can be cheaper. So then how about I just get the VPN to allow me to have like cheaper materials and then I can just make whatever I want. Something like that. That's a cool Uh, idea. So you're just trying to find these connections from these very distinct separate things. But where they overlap is like the really cool, unique part about it all. Yeah, totally. And I remember when I was a kid, I would, uh, I, I used to watch this YouTuber. His name was Woody's Gamer Tag. And that's neither here nor there, but he would do these like, just random Call of Duty videos. That was what I was into. But he would always put like a sponsor. And I remember as a kid when someone read a brand deal, I was like, I'm not watching this. I don't know why I thought that. But I was like, I don't even want to watch the video. Nothing about it I wanted to see. And so it's like, I get why you. it's a silly thing to think. You just skip past the freaking brand part. But as a kid, I so now I never want to like so have someone going through my video and be like, this brand seems so out of place, like and have time to skip off it. So I really try to interconnect them. So it's something I want to do and something the brand's going to want and something that's fun to make. And so there's no like brand ish part of it even though there is you know what i mean by that oh no i absolutely get that and that's what's so cool it's like your videos sure the brand the brand is like whoa yeah you know maybe not even throughout the whole thing but at least a portion of it but it's so it makes so much sense it's almost like it becomes part of the story like you were talking about like you create ups and downs like there's story to Mm -hmm. these projects that you're doing and the brand's just another element of that story and so it's uh yeah it doesn't detract from it at all which is really that takes extra work you You know it would be easy to just slap it as a label on on top or at the beginning or at the end or whatever Mm -hmm. but it's much harder to make it like to integrate it throughout you do a great job of that and it's not as seamless as my description it does take like i i I have a script for this the part two of the bench video that i'm finishing right now and my god i have like two lines written and i'm like how do i write this freaking script and it's gonna come to me eventually i don't know how but that's why like if the filming of the project I don't think of the script because I want like a problem to come about. And when, if I wrote a script beforehand, I wouldn't know what the problem's going to be. So usually I just write it as I work, which is helpful also. That's cool. That's cool. So let me ask you this, Turner, since, you know, we know each other from Big Brother. Big Brother was yeah. a huge influence in both of our lives. Did Big Brother influence or change you as an artist, maker, creator, influencer? Like, did it influence the way you see yourself, your work, your career? I'd be curious to hear that. Yeah, totally. I think like, I think the relationships I made was the most important thing I got from Big Brother. And so maybe not as career based, but that helped like a lot of, I feel like you meet people when you're supposed to meet people and whether they stay in your life or leave your life, it's meant to be. And so like, um, I, I'm not friends with everyone from our big brother season. I don't think anyone is friends with everybody. It's just <laughs> not, not possible to have 16 though. new friends. Yeah. And so it's like my relationship with you, my relationship with Alyssa, my relationship with Jasmine. Um, and there's more people. The list goes on. If I didn't say your name, I, you know who you are, but, uh, um, meant to be drama. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And so it's like, so many of my relationships, I, I'm so happy that I have, especially you. Like, I don't know. I love talking to you. This is this hasn't even seemed like we're doing a podcast. This hour has literally flown by in like seemingly a minute. And so like, <laughs> I, I really think that everybody who I've remained in contact with for a career reason or for just a, I love having them in my life. That's the best thing I've uh yeah. I've like taken from the show and I, I thought it was so funny in Alyssa's episode. She was like the best and worst things I, I gained from big brother were the relationships. I was like, that's a funny way to put it, uh, but I, mean, I fully it, agree. It really is. And it's funny. I think that sometimes even clouded my, I don't know, I, my gameplay. I, 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 like that idea was always kind of forefront because I was such a big, big brother fan and I would follow all the people online. I'd see them getting together and it just seemed like they created this like new family and I really wanted that. And so I think sometimes yeah. I would like try to make things work more than they needed to. Um, I feel like now I'm at a really good place. It's like, oh, the people I'm close to, I, I talk with a lot. They're like, I think of them more, you know, it's kind of like your friends that maybe you made a friend in high school or made a friend in college and if somebody yeah. asks you like oh how do you know them you're like oh we met in high school like that's kind of how i feel about like you and other people i'm like oh how did you know them like oh we met on this random reality show like of course because the relationships have built up m- more i mean we've known each other way longer than three months outside the house than inside the house and um you know i i think i've gotten to i've made peace with the people that i am no longer friends with and, exactly. and really embrace you know the people that i am and and both are okay like yeah. like you're saying it is fine like none of us in life are meant to be in each other's lives like 
100% of the time. We will have some people who are like that and there for the long runs, but we will have some people who make their way in and make their way out. And that's just part of, of life too. And that's even like with my best friends, we could not talk for months and then we reconnect and it's the same. So it's like, we might not talk every day or even every week, but like yeah. the, when we do talk, there's not like nothing's lost, you know, like even, um, I, I think literally the only person I, I, there's a couple people I, I talk to like every other day, but even that it's like, I don't reach out to anybody every day. There's like no chat. I'm doing my own thing. And it's like, I love my, my friends, but I can't, it's not even like I can't be bothered, but it's like, I don't even want to be annoying. Sometimes, sometimes I don't want to feel like a burden. If I'm reaching out to someone every day, it's like, all right, you're kind of like overstaying your welcome here. Holy shit. Exactly. Um, and yeah, that's yeah. just introvert in tendencies. I'm sure coming to play too. I'm the same way. I don't think I talk to anybody every day, yeah, but so I do literally. love that how some of my big brother friends are the people that I talk to the most now, which is just, yeah, of course. Isn't that cool that we didn't have that, you know? And, and I think people would be shocked ago. to see that we have developed a great relationship. Right. Because if I was a fan, I'd be like, wait, they like, like each other? Like they're friends? What are you talking about? Yeah. And I always wondered that too, because I would see that with other seasons back when I was just a fan before being yeah. on the show, I'd see that. And I'm like, how in the world are these people friends now? But it's just weird being in the outside. I don't think they tell you like out after the show is like it's whole other experience. It's this yeah. whole other chapter that you're not ever prepared for um, that has its own ups and downs, too. Yeah, and totally. It's like a it, it, oh, like for me, even. It, it could be that way for everybody. But for me, it was like even with the store closing and after Big Brother, like felt like a rebirth and like a like that three months outside of everything. No phone, just a couple people that you know more than you ever wish to know anybody. Honestly, it's like <laughs> right. that was such like a reset. So it's like, you know, I think of my life in like chapters and like Big Brother and afterward is its own whole chapter. Um, Yeah, I, I remember there is this. So I don't know when it was, but Tyler, the creator released a song a while ago and he said he, he really hit puberty at 23. And I was like, how the hell is that possible? But then at 23, I feel the exact same way. I don't think I was even like conscious until 23. I don't think I existed before that. <laughs> I, <laughs> yeah. I totally, I mean, that is so true. Like there is life before big brother and there is life mm -hmm. after big brother. And I even think of some of the, um, oh, what is it? Uh, the song, it's the Frank Ocean song that would come on in the Big Brother house. Um, the oh, black and it? yellow is. Oh, pink, pink and white. Pink and white. Yeah, pink yeah. and white. That's what yep. that song. I knew, I remember you liking, and they would always play over the, the like loudspeakers and like yeah. as it was and like the Beyond, Beyonce God, song that came out right then. Yeah. Like yeah. literally. So like my Spotify, like my music playlist, I have it all in order for my entire life. This is like very OCD of me, but like mm. I have it all in order by my life so it goes from like middle school to high school through college and so there are there are a set of songs that as soon as i got home from big brother i was like what are the songs that are going to be sense memory for big brother that will like instantly bring me back there for better or worse yeah i and could never like hear freaking new york state of mind by jay-z without thinking of uh right before a competition that jesus right. that song was every day Every day. And this is so funny because it's like that just is like that rush of and it's funny because it's like literally as I listen to my music, there's before Big Brother and there's after Big Brother, like even on this like playlist. And and it's just kind of how life is too, you know, in a lot of ways. Yeah, totally. But, and also our our good night messages with song recommendations at the end. Yeah. Um so like somebody did something with that. Yeah, yeah. It's all in a leftover. I, I have it saved. I can't even send it to you. It's like leftovers, Spotify recommendations. Um, and so, so that's how I found out afterwards. I was like, Oh yeah, Suvion Stevens. He's on this playlist. I, I remember that I should listen to him because of Britney. And then I saw Anthony Fantano review. And so I listened to his album and then I was thinking of you and I texted you. Yeah. That's whole so last funny. Thing. <laughs> yeah. It, totally. It's so crazy. I would never thought like while we were doing all that, that that like, in the real world, what is it going to look like in the real world when we actually go listen to these things or check out these things? You know, it just doesn't you don't go that far. Your mind won't let yeah. you go that far because you're in survival mode, you know. Exactly. Well, let me ask you this. So as we move into the next chapter of life, Turner, yeah. dream with me. Like, of what course. is Matthew Turner manifested version of you that you're the version that you're going to evolve into? Now, granted, we already talked about this. We can't know too far in advance. But if it yeah. could be the way you would love to dream it now of what, course what so do you like, want to cook up in the future oh what am i cooking up i what love that uh, <laughs> yeah so this is uh, even if someone hears this and is like no way all right i'll prove you wrong doesn't matter to me think what you want but we'll show you 
<laughs> here's what's happening. All right. Here is what is happening. I am. Um, so I'm building out my brand. It, I'm trying to find it's like social online identity as I like get better at woodworking. It's called plant based uh, furniture. So it's like made the, the joke is it's like whenever I talk about eating plant based beef because I'm a vegetarian, it's like a play on that plant based furniture. And it's made by plants made of wood made of to like, you know, curate uh, different types of plants at the furniture itself. And so that I'm going to build out. I'm going to sell it for millions of dollars to Ikea. I know it's going to happen. Ikea representatives, you might not even believe it. It's going to happen. <laughs> then um, when I hit a million followers on Instagram, hey, might be years to come. It's happening. Doesn't matter. You're and not. Then, You're like growing like wildfire. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's okay. going good. For all you Thank you. Um, so whenever that happens, like I love Rhode Island and I plan to live here for quite a while. It's also like very affordable housing in Rhode Island. Um, like this in New York would not be freaking achievable. I mean, you um, have an amazing loft. It's, it's Thank insane. you. And so I plan on like I do see how when there's this like trend of influencers moving to those like big freaking New York or L.A penthouses and sometimes it just like becomes like re less relatable i'm like oh i can't I so like can't yeah when i was younger that. i like couldn't like grasp on to what that even was so usually that would tune me out but like i i have come to terms with the fact that someday i do actually want that but for right now i'm really happy just living in rhode island building out my furniture brand as I like get better at making furniture, which is a huge step in this. Um, and so it might be years to come and, uh, you know, but that, and then hold on, what was the, what is the other thing I'm doing? I have so many things going on that it's tough to tell what was, oh, and then the, I, my, my dream is also HGTV. I really oh, yeah, think we that I, I've built out something that I'm going to keep building out alongside the back end of the brand. Um, that like my personal brand is going to be easily translatable for a production company to pick up. HGTV and sometimes better to move in silence, move in silence and stand on business. That's what I think that in my head sometimes, but Hey, I'm, that. I'm moving in front of the crowd now. So we're <laughs> out. Um, but yeah, that, those are my two goals. Oh, Turner. I mean, and just think about it and you just keep applying the same process you've been applying thus far and like yeah. you just believe in it and you keep doing it and or you die trying and you're going to move in the direction of that and you're going to pivot if it feels right and or when it feels right or whatnot. Like, it'll yeah, be right there. And it's like this. Uh, This, this is going to sound off topic at first, but a lot of people, right, when you ask, I found this when you ask adults. As if I'm not an adult. I feel like I'm 17 sometimes. But when you ask people who are older their age, they're like, that's that's rude. But like, you should, I, I'm always like so happy with my age. I wish I was 35. And I know if you're like 30, I, whoever's 35 watching this, I'd be like, all right, listen, you're younger. You should enjoy it. But like every year, I just feel like life gets better. Like I navigate it somehow. And I it's like I climb a ladder wrong every year of my life. And so I'm just really excited to see what I work towards by 10 years from now or where my life is then. And I just by the trend of every year gets better. I will, I would love to just have that click button and hit 10 years from now and just see what's going on. I couldn't agree with you more. I mean, and that's what's so cool. It's like, I mean, with that belief, every year gets better. That's what you end up creating around you. Every year gets better. Yeah, and I can't exactly. wait to see. I mean, I always forget, like, there is a decade between you and I, like age wise. Oh, like, yeah. How old are how old are you? I'm 34. <laughs> Oh yeah, and I'm I'm 24. Perfect. And you're 24. that is crazy. Yeah, I, I was I didn't 32 even and you were 22 that. during Big Brother, right? Ish, yeah, yeah. I, ish. I just turned ish. 23, but oh, yeah. yeah, just turned 23. Um, yeah. So that is funny. I forgot that too. I feel like and when I talk, yeah, you and you and Jasmine, uh, like and Amira, you guys are she's same, my yeah. age too. I forget you guys are like a decade older, and that that just goes to show like a. It doesn't really even mean anything. It you know? doesn't mean anything, but I can't <laughs> wait to see you like a decade from now, because I just think like I even just think about myself and like going throughout my 20s and where I am now, like I can attest it gets so much better. <laughs> and, and it makes me excited to like grow old. Like I will never you will never, ever, ever, ever hear me like be like, oh, I'm getting older or this or yeah. that. Like I don't I, I look forward to getting older. I look exactly. forward to it because it's like it's a life well lived. You just know more and more about what you want and and. and and what you want to create. And I don't know, life is a gift. I, I know yeah. everybody says that, but like it truly, truly is. And the the opportunity that we get to create these things that we want to create, it's kind of like playing a video game. That's why I think it's like we play this game. It's like, yeah. what do we want to create with it? You know? It's like, okay, like The Sims is a recreation of life, but sometimes it's like back, like backwards. I feel like I'm just playing a Sims game and I'm like, like no matter what you do, I could ruin my life but like you can get back on track there's always a way to get back on track and it's like no matter what happens it's not the end of the world 
that's what I, all the time I'll be working with clients and they'll, you know, be worried about something or like have anxiety about something. And we'll, we'll play the what if game, right? Cause so many worries come in like, well, what if this happened? What if that happened? What if that happened? And I always say, okay, well, let's answer that question. What if it happened? Oh, yeah. well, then I would do this. Okay. Well, then what would you do after that? And we always, <laughs> yeah. we keep going until we find where everything's okay. Because if you answer enough what if questions, you'll get to the other side. And I like to change the what if question to even if. So it's like, yeah, you might ask yourself, what if I fail? It's like, well, even if I fail, I'm going to keep doing blah, 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 because it's just finding your way onto the other side of it. And very few things can you like most of the time you're going to be able to find your way to the other side, no matter what happens. Anyway. Especially like if you're not like raising somebody else, you're fine. Like you're <laughs> fine. Like granted, if I if I had a child right now, I probably couldn't like drop everything and move to Montana. But like yeah. given that I don't have that, I can do that. I can do. It doesn't matter. Right. And so there's so much more freedom and flexibility in that anyway. So, yeah. And if you do have children and you can't move to Montana, then I apologize. <laughs> Not that you would want that anyway. But... Right. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh, Turner. Like you were saying this, I just could talk to you all day about this stuff. But I just know so many people are just going to listen to this and just be inspired. And if there was one, let's just close this out. Like if there's mm -hmm. one piece of advice you could give to somebody who's wanting to start their own creative pursuit, wanting to start their own business or follow their passions or their art or anything like that. What what would you offer to them? What do you think is most important to keep in mind? I think especially if you're like beginning the process, like just start, you know, like you just need to start. If I when I was in high school recording with a flip video camera that I got for like 50 bucks, like if I was waiting till I got all the equipment, if I was waiting until I got this or that, it's like it never would have happened. So you just need to start doing your thing. You're going to figure it out along the way. Like if I was waiting to start making furniture until I had all the tools, I still wouldn't. I, I, I use like two tools when I would work. And <laughs> I don't think anyone would guess that, but like I don't have the proper equipment I need. Um, And so it's like you just need to start. And so like, OK, I don't want this to come off wrong, but if you're. Yeah asking a million questions to everybody else before you even start. It's like you're already three steps behind the next person who did start when you did. Um, so you just need to get going, especially if it's a creative endeavor. Cause it's like, if you're asking tips from everybody and it's like a creative thing, it's like, you don't want outside influences necessarily. I try to limit how much like of other people's reels I watch so that yeah. I'm not influence. And that's not to say it's bad to get influence. We were talking before and sorry to go on a whole nother tangent. Um, but I, what I said was my, and listen to this creator, if you're watching, love you. I'm a huge fan, but there was this uh, creator. His name is a hundred thieves low. And I'm a huge fan of this guy. I watch everything he puts out, which contradicts what I just said, but <laughs> either way, when I first started making like content content and I was like doing voiceovers, I would like watch his, write the script, be like, okay, what would he say? And then I like got a real basis for like his content and i hate saying that because like so it almost sounds like damn copyright infringement but then over the course of a year i made my own style of that and um i don't know if everyone should be copying a hundred thieves low sorry bro love ya but like that's just what i did and it worked out and now it's i have like my own wheels like, it's like yeah you were able that to exactly kind of use his is kind of to get your footing until you're like oh wait no this is how i want to do it to now you know you've changed so much and found your own style and i mean i feel like you really taught me that like when i was just kind of talking with you about like social media stuff just like off the cuff in real life it was like oh i think especially in online businesses like with coaches and hypnotherapy and stuff like that like all the gurus are trying to like use this trending audio and do this yeah. and like they're trying to like they're just creating copies of each other whereas i feel like you made such a great point that it's like, I, I want to create something that's so uniquely me. And sure, we might get inspiration from other people as we're finding our unique voice. But once you find something that's so uniquely you, like, I'm going to go through my, my, I'm going to be on social media and just be scrolling through reels. But when Turner's pops up, like, I know it's him, Thank you know, you. like, it, yeah, because it's, it's so unique. I want to be different than everybody else that's how you get attention not being yeah. the same and trending and all this other stuff like how who have you seen with a bucket hat on a liquid death hat i <laughs> i don't know why i've been doing this this week but the the bucket <laughs> hat on the trucker hat it's my new thing it's gonna be a thing someday maybe 
my friends are like, can you like pick a hat? I'm like, no, I, I've started something and I can't go back. <laughs> you can't go back. <laughs> you saw it here first. Exactly. Oh, Turner, thank, well, yeah, you, so thank you so much for yeah. offering all this stuff. This has been, I, I can't wait to personally go back and listen to all this just because it's, it's just inspiring to get to hear kind of the mindset that you apply to all these things. And guys, I mean, it's, it works. <laughs> Yeah, it exactly. It works, and you're an example and, of it. So, And likewise, also, I would like to uh, give you your flowers. I really do love what you do, and um, I'm I'm very proud to be able to call you a friend of mine. And so thank you for having me on the podcast. You're the GOAT. And also, when I was watching all the other episodes, I was like, oh, I wonder I wonder what my intro outro is going to be. So I'm excited <laughs> to hear my intro well, outro. You'll have to see. You'll have to listen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, that's so much fun. Well, I appreciate it. I know sometimes, you know, how B- BB people are. We all have our people that like watch out for us online and I'll get yeah. like the smattering of messages that's like Turner talked about you in his live and they'll like <laughs> send me the little clip and it's like always something super kind and I'm like thank you like that really makes my day and yeah, of course. I just want you to know I appreciate it it's- of course Turner oh, here's yeah. your outro <laughs> what do you think I thought that was funny that you wanted to see what your intro and outro would be I hope I do it justice but before we go any further I just want to say thank you Turner for coming onto the show and I'd especially like to say just one more thing Thanks for your comments. <laughs> Am I getting too much pleasure from saying that? Is it too soon? <laughs> no, nah, I freaking love that guy. Did you guys notice what I was talking about, about how he thinks differently? Whereas I feel like so many other people might be like, that's going to take too long, or I can't do that, or that's for other people, but not me. He just goes and does it. He just goes and does it, and he started before you've ever even thought that it was time for you to start, right? He believes in himself, and he's not afraid to put in the work because he finds joy in the process. You know, it's so funny. I'm I'm teaching this group hypnotherapy and coaching course right now to this incredible group of people. Uh, if you missed joining the course, I hope you'll have a chance to join us in some future round. But that this actually comes up a lot in our course is how can we fall in love with the process of manifesting more than the result? How can we love to create the content, create the furniture, create the whatever, more than how many likes or followers or brand deals we might have? It doesn't mean you can't like those things. You can love those things, but you have to fall in love with the process. You have to want to do it again and again and again, because guess what? The journey of our manifestation is 99.99% of our life. So if we don't like that, if we're just waiting for the time that we get the followers or we get the money or we get the whatever, you're going to live a pretty miserable life. And honestly, you probably aren't even going to have the alignment and the mindset necessary to even create that result to begin with. So notice how he doesn't even bat an eye when he says that it might take years to reach certain goals. He's like, he's, he's not like, oh, that's going to take forever. I guess I won't do it. No, he's like, yeah, that's what it takes. He recognizes that. That's the name of the game. He knows that all the videos, all the furniture, all the rugs, anything that he does throughout those years will build up to that vision that he had in mind. So he gets to work. So I just want to thank you, Travelers, for joining us here today on this journey towards destination manifestation. You are absolutely amazing. I love that you're here. I love that we can manifest together. And if you haven't done so already, be sure to subscribe to the podcast. If you've enjoyed this episode, if you learned something interesting about what it means to have a creative mindset, you can certainly learn more by subscribing to the show. Seriously, even Big Brother interviews like these, which we've had several on the show by now, they're I feel like, and I know I'm biased, but I feel like they're really unlike any other conversation you'll hear about Big Brother that's out there because it all has to do with the mindset behind the player, the house guests, and who they are and how they think in real life and getting to know kind of the the true essence of them. And I think that's why the interviews are so successful. You don't see other people asking these kind of questions out there. And so I hope you enjoyed it, regardless if you're a Big Brother fan or not. All music on this podcast is by A-Cubed. And remember, if you believe that life will continue to get better and better each and every year, your brain is going to find evidence that that will be true. And then guess what? Your life will get better. Better and better every single year. I'll catch you next time. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, is this